Hey guys, I'm the Strongman Historian and today we are going to talk about everything that happened in the sport of strongman in the month of January. The beginning of the year is always a bit slow, not much is happening because it's pretty much the end of the off season, but we had some competitions happening, even some big ones, so let's get through them. The first competition of the year was Brazil's Strongest Man, won by Lucas Rogerio. Even though Brazil isn't really known as a strongman nation, there were some decent guys in the past that were doing okay at the SCL level. And this guy, is he's only 26 years old, there is clearly some potential, so we may be seeing him in the near future in some bigger shows. The second competition of the year was a big one. It was the Beasts of Burden happening in Australia. And the lineup was looking really good. We had Matthew Rack, Eddie Williams, John Stephen Corey Booth, Jordan Osborne, among others. But one name was clearly standing out, and that's Matthew Rack. Matt clearly showed that this is a small pond for him, as he's arguably a top 10, top 12 guy in the world. And in five events, he only lost four points. He dominated the whole competition. And yeah, there's not much to say. Matt is a beast. And the most exciting comp of January was the 2024 Britain's Strongest Man. And exciting it was. The first event was deadlift for reps. The guys were able to choose from either 400 or 360 kilos. And go at it. Adam Bishop did 5 reps with 400 without a suit. And then he did 360 on top of that. It's absolutely crazy. People were very skeptical about him going for 505, but this was a statement. He is clearly one of the best, absolutely best deadlifters of all time. And yeah, <laughs> Tom Stoltman did, did five reps. And he was second. This is absolutely crazy. Like the standard of deadlifting sh shown here was incredible. 11 out of the 12 guys managed to pull 400. 11. That's, that's crazy. Gav hit it for three reps. Luke Stoltman for two. Shane Flowers did it for three reps. Kane Francis did it for two. So did Pau Dwyer. Like, what the hell is happening? Another performance I just have to shout out is Shane Flowers tossing six bags in the sandbag toss in 13.65 seconds, shattering the previous world record. And the winner was, to no one's surprise, Tom Stoltman. He dominated the whole competition, as a two-time World Strongest Man should. Gavin Bilton was second, and Gav is making a case for himself to be a top 10 guy in the world, and I do believe he will make the World Strongest Man final this year. The third spot was Luke Stoltman, and it's just great to see, like Luke looks like uh, the look that won Europe's strongest man he <laughs> and now he had a kid so the dead strength is only going to kick in even further so he might be a problem for everyone and you might have noticed that I didn't mention Luke Richardson and that's unfortunately because Luke got injured again he tore his hamstring and it's so frustrating because this guy if he was able to stay at 100% and compete, he is, without a doubt in my mind, a top 10 in the world. But unfortunately, there always seems to be something with Luke. It's so sad. I wish him a quick recovery and hopefully he can show us what he's capable of again. Okay, enough with the depressive talk. We are going to talk about something positive. And the positive thing is that Trey Mitchell is looking absolutely amazing in his recovery. As you might know, he tore his Achilles tendon at Rogue last year, but he seems to be on some kind of a revenge anime plotline or something. He looks really good. Obviously, the biggest question will be uh, how he can cope with moving events, whether the injury will play on his mind and it will hinder him. But like right now, if you put a bar on his back or in his, on the, or in his hands, he is one of the strongest in the world right now. And the biggest fighting uh, event in history, the Finishers' Championships with gazillion of dollars uh, going to the athletes, is not happening, to no one's surprise. Uh, yeah, like who would have guessed 
the biggest uh, super fight with uh, I don't know how many million pay-per-views with 1.5k followers on Instagram or something like that is not happening. Surprise Pikachu face. In other news, the show classic slash strongest man on earth, uh, they now have a YouTube channel where they upload events from past years. So if you didn't manage to catch the live stream, go check it out. And yeah, a lot of people complain about the, the sport of strongman not being accessible, that they can't watch stuff, but like you literally have a live stream and you can rewatch it on YouTube later. So there's no excuse. Go watch it. It's, it's one of the best competitions going right now and it might be the best in the, the near future. So go check it out, subscribe to, to their channel and hey, subscribe to my channel as well. <laughs> And let me know, please, if you like uh, like these kind of recap videos, because I did them when I first started uh, doing YouTube for like three months in a row. And honestly, like people just didn't watch them. So I assume that they don't like them or at least the algorithm doesn't like them. So let me know if you'd like to see more of these. I will try to make them every month. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, also, sorry for my like dead voice or robotic voice or whatever uh, i checked it today and the last video i did the voiceover for was a year and a half ago so i will try to improve sorry uh, yeah just sorry okay so that's the end of the video uh, i'm the strong historian check out my other videos especially this playlist right here i will put on and yeah thank you guys for watching see ya